six eight one shadow. Welcome to our um, week three match of the EBT Moon Division. We are facing off against our good friend Hiker Toad, coach of the Boston Bulldogs. Um, if he has any links, they'll be in the description down below. But um, he definitely is a very solid battler, and it will be very tough for us to um, get this win here. So we're, we're hoping to get a win to try to go positive. But he is definitely a very tough opponent. Uh, but to go over the team here, I'm um, just going to say the first two mods together because it is my sand sweeping. We have pre a pretty standard hip howdon, and then we have a stand pretty standard extra drill with, um, with we're running extra about this week, but otherwise it's just pretty standard. Nothing too, um, nothing too interesting on that. But then next up, we have Togekiss. We're running um, Fizz Def Togekiss this week so that we... Mainly because um, we're not going to be staying in on Tapu Koko anyway, and he does have the Mega Beedrill, which he opted not to bring. And we are. So, um, Togekiss could be um, very helpful against that Beedrill. And I apologize if you hear background noise. Um, there's like trucks outside making noise and stuff like that. But um, next up, we have, um, for we have the um, Fortress here because. Um, because we can get some nice hazards up on him with um, the only hazard removal that he brought this week was Latios, which means that he would have to, um, if he wants to set up hazards, he would have to defog his own hazards, which is really nice for us. Because if he did bring Dawn Fan, that we would have had to be a bit more cautious. But then again, hazards would in fact break his sturdy on Dawn Fan, so we'd be able to take that out with like um, a nice little crash from Weavile or something along those lines there. So the next up, we have um, specially defensive Rotom Heat this week. To deal with the Tapu Koko, you can deal with the Tapu Koko, um, and also helps out with. Um, I'm also bringing um, Hex this week because of um, because of possible be possibly being able to, being able to get up Toxic Spikes, and if not, I did I do also have the Toxic on Rotom just in case of um, Toxic Spikes going up. But lastly, we have a pretty standard Weavile, Life Orb Weavile um, with Low Kick for the Reggie Steel. Ice will crash for stab and does good damage to the Latios. Knock off because knock off is just powerful with um, Weavile, and then poison jab for the Tapu Koko if he's not running. Um, if he's not running the the um, if he's not running timid, which I will go in. I will go more into the Weavile later in the match. But um, now to start off this match, I decide to lead off with my fortress because I can get up some nice hazards. And I know he definitely want to keep um, Latias healthy for the uh, for the match, so we're gonna play it. I'm gonna lead off with um with Fortress. He's gonna lead off with Porygon Z, and he's gonna go for Hidden Power Fire. Brings me down to my sturdy, and um right here I decided to let down the Toxic Spikes because um this was very important because since he did not bring the Mega Beedrill this week, I can freely set up my Toxic Spikes with the only um way to remove them on his team being his um his Latias going for Defog. So that's really good for me here. So we get a layer of toxic spikes up, and now we are going to um, we're gonna sack the um, we're gonna sack the fortress, not trying to take any risks. Now we go into Weavile here, and right here we make um, he's gonna switch out, go into his Reggie Steel, but I make a but I actually actually no, I actually go for a knockoff, trying to see what he's gonna do. And I knock off a knock off a Shulker Berry, which is really nice. But now a low kick, getting him down. Um, game down a lot, and he goes for Toxic and misses, and that's really unfortunate for him, but it does help us out a lot in the fact that Weavile will now be a lot healthier for this game to put in a bunch of work here. So Weavile is able to just... I click knockoff here only because um, instead, of, instead of clicking low kick, I click knockoff in case he wanted to um, preserve, try to preserve Reggie Steel, switch into something else. I could have gotten a nice knockoff... Um, I could have gotten off a nice knockoff on like the Porygon, the Embor, um, maybe even the Greninja. So... Knockoff was definitely a very good play for um, that part, but um, Registeel goes down, and now Embor's going to come out, and I know 100% I'm switching. I go into um, my Hippowdon, and he goes for Flare Blitz, and that damage, based on my calc, I believe that he is banded. So, um, so, he, so we know he's banded. So I'm pretty sure he's banded, but I want to play it safe either way, because his Embor does hit like a truck. And he's gonna go for another flip, but it's knocking me out, which is perfectly fine. I could have tried to preserve this thing, but at the same time, um, this Embor is pretty low down. And now we go into Exit Drill, and now this turn is very is is a very interesting turn right here because we're presented with a very big 50/50 because um, 
because multiple things could happen here. He could flare blitz with he could um predict me to go for S D and flare blitz with Mborn, knocking out my Excadrill and knocking out Mborn in the process. Which could which would really um not do which would really not um be good for me, or he could um he could predict me to attack um he could predict me to attack and he can go for sucker punch. So the decision for me is either should I go for S D and hope he sucker punches or go for um and go for an earthquake and hope he doesn't sucker punch because if I can get up a plus two here and he goes for sucker punch, I have a really good shot at winning this game because I do out because I do outspeed um a lot of his I do outspeed his whole team. I know Greninja does have priority um priority, but other than that I outspeed everything else. So for this turn we do go for the attacking move and he does go for sucker punch, which really sucks. If we had gotten the SD, he would have died to poison damage there, which really really sucks for us. And now Greninja can come in and knock us out with his priority water shuriken. And the only reason that um that the 50-50 there was important now is because um Embor would have been dead either way. But now because the now because um now because I'm not plus two and I, and if I was plus two I would have been at higher HP. Then I could have lived this Greninja, um, the Greninja Water Shurikens, knocked knocked out Greninja, and then would have been able to um, possibly even take the game at that point because I do outspeed everything. I'd be able to, uh, I'd be able to knock out Latias. I'd be able to knock out Latias with an Iron Head. Greninja would die to an EQ. Um, Tapu Koko would die to an EQ, and then Porygon Z would die to um, probably anything I could do, um, Iron Head or EQ. So. Uh, definitely a very unfortunate 50-50 there. We lose Excadrill here. Now we're a bit we're in a bit of a um now we're in a bit of a situation. But we're gonna go into our um we're gonna go into our Rota actually not our Rota, we're gonna go into our Togekiss here. I'm uh, making him think we're um Spadef. As he goes into Latias, we go straight for a dazzling gleam with a nice bluff there from us. And now on this turn, um he can do one of he can do um one of two things. He can either stay in, defog the spikes, the toxic spike, and um, and lose his Latias, or he can preserve his Latias and switch into something else, and that can take damage and um, get poisoned by toxic spikes. So I, so I say to myself, either way, I'm gonna click Dazzling Gleam because if he stays in, I kill the Latias. If he switches, I do good damage to no matter what he switches in, because it does um, almost half to the Porygon, probably kills the Greninja, and it does and it can do decent damage to the Tapu Koko, which would be very nice, and then that would be poison in that turn. But he does opt to um, sack his Latias, defog these um, toxic spikes, and I get the dazzling gleam off. It is a crit, but it doesn't matter that much. It didn't really matter because he was gonna die anyway. So now he's gonna switch into the Porygon Z here. Um, so he goes for Tri Attack. He does a lot with the Tri Attack and as I go for dazzling gleam. Dazzling gleam does um, a bit less than half. And now he's he's at half he's at half health. And now he goes for Tri Attack again. I just sack off the um, Togekiss here. Um, no real need to um, switch anything in um, aggressively. If I go into Weavile here, and here I actually make a double, and I'm regretting this because he actually is not Scarf in this match. I was playing the entire match through thinking that he was a Scarf Porygon Z, but he did tell me at, at the end of the match that he was Silk Scarf. He wasn't Choice Scarf. So um, if I had stayed in with Weavile and clicked, if I had stayed in with Weavile, clicked Knock Off or Low Kick, I would have been able to do. Um, I would be able to do some damage, or if I got the hard, or if I got the hardest of reads and went um, poison jab. But um, now I switch in. I go into Rotom as he's going to switch out and go into the Greninja here. And Greninja gonna take a lot of damage, and he thinks, okay, it's a Rotom. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna be able to um to just click Water Shuriken and, and knock this thing out. But I'm Spadef, and that's not gonna that's not gonna do a lot of damage. He only hits twice, which is unfortunate. So I can just knock him out with a free volt switch here, and then that Greninja is gone. I switch out into my Weavile here, and now it's a really close game right now. He's gonna go into his Tapu Koko, where I'm going to switch out into my Rotom to see who, what he wants to do, and he's going to go for the Guardian of Alola Z move, and. This is important here because now with my left ultra recovery, it says 25% on the battle, but I actually um, when you when when I hovered over the Pokemon in the game, it has it said 24%, which means I'm just out of outside of the range of possibly living a Thunderbolt from this type of Coco. And if he is um, if he is timid, then he wins the game here. But if he is um, 
But if he's modest, I could win here. So he goes for Thunderbolt. He knocks me out um, with a crit. The crit doesn't matter at all. I would have died either way. So I go into Weavile here. I play Poison Jab, hoping um, that he's that he's modest, but he's not modest. He is timid. So very close game with Hiker. And the thing that um, that kind of got to me about this match was that I almost ran Scarf Weavile, which cleaned up at the end of the game there, which really sucks for me. But um, it is it is something that um, like you know, high tech is twenty twenty, so we can't really um, I can't really be, be too mad at myself for that. But it was definitely a really good game to Hiker. Um, he did win 2 of so we are 1-2 and two now with a minus 4 differential. But we're not doing so bad this season with... Um, we had we had a bad game week 1, a very solid win week 2, and then now we have a very close game for week 3. So um, hopefully we can pick, pick back up a week 4, get to a neutral record, and then get up to a positive record for the Connecticut Cro Crocodiles here. But that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you all next time.